Shalom and welcome to Temple Jeremiah at 50. This is an overview of the history of our congregation from its beginning in 1959 until the present day. Much has changed over the last half century, but one thing that has not changed is our commitment to be a warm and welcoming community. Our founders had a vision to create a congregation that would welcome everyone with open arms, and truly this has been our mission throughout the last 50 years. One of the things that is the hallmark of our congregation is the spirit of volunteerism. There are so many people who volunteered their time and talent to the celebration of our 50th anniversary. There are three that I would like to single out by name. First, Julie Ford, who is the chair of our 50th anniversary year. And I'd also like to thank Rusty Coleman and Ernie Schubert, who are co-producers of this video. As you can see, I'm in the Jeremiah Lounge right now. It probably looks a little lonely to you, but if you're like most Jeremiahs, it looks like this, with lots of people around chatting, maybe getting a nosh from the bagel bar, or registering, or gathering, or preparing for an event, such as the annual Shushan Shuffle. In other words, just being part of the Jeremiah community. As with most other communities, Ours is a collection of individuals, of friends, acquaintances, and families, all with varied activities and interests. But there is a common bond among us, of course, the bond of Reformed Judaism. We see it each Shabbat, but it's perhaps most apparent on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. In addition to observing the more reflective and somber High Holidays, we Jeremiahs celebrate big time the joyful holidays too. And what better example than Purim? Music is an essential part of our Purim celebration, as well as all of our other holiday programs. The music in our adult and junior choir performances, cantorial renditions, and more contemporary offerings help make Temple Jeremiah's services and programs very special events. Of course, special events aren't limited to holidays at Temple Jeremiah. On this, our 50th anniversary, we have as a congregation joined together to fulfill the last mitzvah, to write a Torah. Jeremiah at 50 is a congregation of givers, of individuals donating time and resources to fulfill our mission of tikkun olam. Whether it's brotherhood members building a playground for impoverished preschoolers in Waukegan, or a sisterhood member working at the sisterhood gift shop to keep funds flowing to a multitude of charitable causes, or Shirut La'am volunteers loading groceries for the sick or unemployed, there is a never-ending parade of Jeremiahs giving of themselves to help heal the world. We also have become a community of insatiable learners over the past half century. Our annual Golder Interfaith Lecture Series anchors a large number of adult learning programs not only for the Jeremiah community, but for the larger community as well. Over the years, some of our country's most distinguished citizens have shared their insights and reflections from our BIMA. At our annual retreat in Walk, we discuss and learn about a wide array of topics, from why Jews tend to be politically liberal to issues inherent in Torah. We learn from each other and from resources found nearby, including the Illinois Holocaust Museum. We have learned that our history must never be forgotten.
Our initial service, very first Rosh Hashanah service, was attended by 75 families. By the second year, we had nearly doubled in size and were already talking about getting a permanent rabbi. In the early, early days of our congregation, in the formative years, Rabbi Mann at Sinai Congregation was our mentor. He really was very important for our survival the first couple of years. And he was the one who brought the name of Rabbi Tarshish in our consideration of a permanent rabbi. Rabbi Tarshish was located in Charleston, South Carolina. His availability was caused by his family, as well as himself, reaching a point of not being able to accept the problems that the South was having at that time with integration. Rabbi Tarshish was a very liberal man and uh, welcomed integration and his congregation was unruly. He and his family decided that they would be happier to live in some other area. And we were fortunate enough to uh, have him come and, and be our permanent rabbi. Everybody loved Rabbi Tarshish. He was a wonderful man, a very human person, and a very caring person. As we grew larger, we were not going to be able to continue in using public schools. We had a temple meeting announcing our desire to go to he ahead with a building, and uh, over 100 families resigned, which in one way was positive. The families were left that were left were so dedicated to the temple. Rabbi Tarshish, after serving here for a number of years, and he was in his 70s, wanted to retire. And we spent 19 months finding a new rabbi. CCAIR was having an annual meeting in New York, so I made an arrangement with them that they'd give me an office at the UAHC, and I would interview them. Uh, and I had 16 interviews set up over two days. The second day, I went to the washroom, and I heard somebody saying, are you the fellow who's interviewing for the Midwestern congregation? I said, well, there may be others, but I am. He said, my name's Bob Schreibman. I said, my name's Ed Cadden, and we left. And my next interview, I got a phone call from the head of the CCAR. We want to add one more person, and that was the person. And we talked, and I liked Ed immediately. And uh, this was on a Tuesday. And he said, we have to know whether you're interested by Thursday. So Wednesday morning, I flew out to Chicago. And when we interviewed Bob, I could see something I never saw before. I, I was sitting in front of these 27, 28 people, and they started to nod. And all over the room, <laughs> there was nodding. And that was it. And we had two soloists. One was a member, a lovely woman, very dedicated, very nice. And we had Sharona Feller, and she became our full-time cantor and bar bat mitzvah trainer. Sharona was not a certified cantor, so we started looking again for a soloist. And uh, Anne, our educator, said, you know, you remember Amy, she's teaching, I think, second or third grade. Uh, she's really good with the kids, has a good voice. And so I interviewed her, and that worked out beautifully. And as you can see, she's, she's not only still here, she's probably, in many ways, the soul of what Temple Jeremiah is today. Amy and Ann were hired the same year, in 1980. The thing I find most fascinating about Ann is her ability to uh, reinvent things even after she's been here 30 years. Anne received the Covenant Award in 1998. It is a very prized award amongst the Jewish education community. A lot of people think hiring Amy and Anne were the best decisions ever made at Temple Jeremiah. Fern, it was sort of the same thing. Fern had been offered a position at one of the uh, Jays as their administrator. And I knew her, she was an active member. And I thought, this is a waste. Why take a congregant who has so much talent, who can do it, and let her work for someone else? 
So um, I asked her to join our staff, and she did. And it's been an unbelievably good staff. Rabbi Schreiman retired, and Rabbi Cohen came. Oh, I think he's very dedicated. I have the highest regard for our Rabbi Paul Cohen. I have been so pleased with, with his leadership and his caring and his uh, so many different things about him that I admire. The education of our children has been one of the cornerstones of Temple Jeremiah ever since its founding 50 years ago. Our founders were keenly aware that without a robust educational program, Reform Judaism could not continue as a force for good in the contemporary world. In no small measure then, our children are our hope for the future, for Temple Jeremiah and for Reform Judaism as well. In the next 50 years, they will be the ones who will be carrying our banner on the march to a better world. In our religious school, our goal is to have our children proudly identify themselves as Jews by teaching them our rich culture, our history, ethics, beliefs, and heritage. And while the core of our instructional program is found in our religious school classrooms, we offer a wide range of enrichment activities such as making artwork and participating in show and tells. Our intergenerational program gives youngsters an opportunity to learn from seniors in the Jeremiah community to understand the world from another generation's perspective. And conversely, it gives seniors some insight into our youngsters' world. We also offer an opportunity for our children to participate in tikkun olam projects, such as feeding the hungry. Hello. Our young people also learn how to work together to trust one another to accomplish a goal. It could be lifting a ball from a tube while blindfolded or perfecting a song for confirmation. By year's end, when Brotherhood holds its hot dog lunch for Sunday school students, it's wonderful to see the maturity of our older students who are about to embark on their roles as young adult Jews. Later in the day, at confirmation exercises, that maturity is borne out as each participant gives his or her confirmation speech. And then in the fall, the process will begin once again to instill the values of Reform Judaism, its ethics, beliefs, customs, and history, to help make each child a proud and confident member of our community and the world. With the thousands of people that have been a part of our congregation throughout the past 50 years, it is impossible to include everyone in this video. But please know that your time, your talent, and your spirit are so appreciated. And we understand how much you as an individual have added to the strength of our community. Second, we hope that you realize also that Temple Jeremiah continues to be a leader in the American Reform Jewish movement, from the many awards that we have received to the positions of leadership that individuals within our congregation have taken in the national movement. And third, well, that is up to you. As you come into the temple to celebrate Shabbat, to attend an adult learning program, to meet friends, take a look around the building, meet a new person, and understand what makes our congregation such a strong and vibrant place. You'll see people encouraging each other, You'll see people laughing and having a great time. You'll see people connecting with each other with sincerity and warmth. And that is perhaps the true measure of what we are, a warm, loving, and generous community. <laughs>